Hey guys, uh, Mel Milton here. Uh, before I get into this video workshop, I'd like to thank Imagine Effects and Clip Studio for the opportunity. Uh, both of these entities have made a big impact on me and my art, and I'm super humbled to be asked to do this. So um, I also wanted to apologize for a few issues beforehand that I came into uh, with making this video. First being the cropping out of the layers side of the my of my work my workspace um, I didn't take the time to set the dimensions properly um, I thought that um, they would have been set from my YouTube making videos but apparently that wasn't the case so that part of the image is, is uh, the video is cropped out so um, and also um, the second half of this video uh, didn't make it uh, I don't know if it was while I was taking screenshots that it shut off uh, my recording, but the second part didn't record. So what I've done is, is I've re-record. I mean, I recorded uh, explanations of the key concepts that I felt were the main turning points of this piece, and hopefully that'll fill in the gaps. Um, I appreciate you taking the time to uh, take a look at this, and I uh, hope you glean something from it. Let's get started. So the notes I received uh, for this project was um, I was to create a uh, young 20-something African-American female with short hair in profile view and um, wanted to be more of a, um, you know, majority of the picture to be dark um, and really contrasty. Uh, they didn't want a straight on profile, but you know, something that was slightly turned so that you could see both eyes. Um, and so these were the uh, rough images that I had went ahead and sent out uh, to see which ones would be approved. Um, two was the one that was uh, decided upon with you know the short hair from three, and so uh, that's where the beginning of, of this demo starts. All right, so as you can see, my layers aren't showing up, so that's what the apology was for. Um, as I start um, blocking this in, again, I use the image um, that they had laid out with the text just to you know, get a feel for where everything was at and make sure that um, those things were uh, you know, visible throughout the process so I can keep those things in mind. Um, I used a G pen, which is you know my favorite um, uh, drawing um, pen in Clip Studio. It's, it's one of the reasons why um, I ended up making a switch. I just you know drawing it felt like really inky. You know the thick thin line weights were uh, fantastic, and so um, I love that's my 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 go to drawing one. And then my second, how I you know get here and I start doing blocking it in with the lasso fill tool so um, to me the lasso fill tool it has sped up my workflow uh, a lot you know because it's like I can block in really big and um, get the ideas out you know faster than um, I used to so you know so right now I'm just flushing out the you know kind of like how I want the light you know to hit her face and um, I've locked locked the layer as you can see I locked her transparency so that I can paint along the you know the face without um, going into the background and whatnot so again building in my my uh, shadows again lasso t fill tool is, is like my lifesaver and so um, you know I'm just kinda getting a lay of the land so to say, at the beginning stages of this. I really didn't have a game plan, you know, when I first got this assignment. Um, I, I kind of knew that I wanted to do a, um, you know, start with values first and then um, work my work my way into colors just for the fact uh, that, um, one, I'm, I'm currently, you know, in my learning you know to better understand things I, I've gone back to uh, 
you know, getting a better understanding of values and tones. And because um, uh, color has always been something that I've been um, intimidated by. And it just seems so uh, overwhelming. So, you know, s since I've moved into uh, doing more illustrations, um, I've been I've been utilizing, you know, this workflow to help, um, you know, get a better understanding of um, how color works within value, you know, because it's, it's, you know, value helps sort out what the form is doing. It helps the form to read. The colors pull that emotion, but I know with, um, with values, you know, you know, it, it, it gives you something, you know, to, you know, um, feel the forms. So that's kind of what I wanted to, you know, tackle in the first part of this, um, in the first part of this piece. And at this point, you know, I, I kind of think along the lines like, um, a sculptor, I'm still, uh, I'm working out ideas in my head, you know, and, you know, taking the time to just think about the forms, you know, helps me to establish more of a game plan. The further down I, I, I work and get certain things, um, by keeping it, uh, you know, in this way, simpler for me that, um, the farther, uh, the farther I go into the illustration, you know, I can go back to those simple, um, concepts. So, you know, to keep back on track, cause I'll, 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 I'll go, you know, off in a wild tangent easily. So this, this kind of wrangles me in. Plus it gives me a chance to noodle. I love noodling, you know? And so, um, you know, the, the noodling kind of lets me, you know, listen to myself as I'm, as I'm going through a piece. So this is this is a majority of of this piece again because I, I want to make sure that the tones are where they are and I'm really timid when it comes to um, when it comes to my tones you know like um, I, res I I you know most of the times I try to reserve you know the darkest darks and the lightest lights so you know like the glowing lines on her face are are going to be you know one of the lighter areas you know. Uh, and it, as you can see, I'm just slowly building up those tones. Um, you know, so like I said, it's it's like modeling, you know, and, and as I go in, um, you know, the eyes are pretty much, you know, the focal point of, of this piece. You know, usually portraits, that's how it is, the windows to the soul. So... Um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll keep, you know, some of the darker stuff, you know, for the eyes to bring that contrast to the eyes. You know, um, you know, thinking back, I'm like, oh, you know, I really wanted this to be, um, really contrasty, you know, so I'm, I'm, as I'm watching it, I'm like, oh, why didn't I go darker? And again, you know, because of that little rule I, you know, put on myself to limit myself to not go so dark, you know, and then I just build up. So it's, you know, a lot of back and forth, you know, looking at where I want, you know, the darks to be. So as I work the hair in, I kind of understood that it was like, um, you know, that light kind of strip in the background uh, and then having the hair really dark against that would would help that to pop and so now I start adding a little bit of, you know uh, dark areas to you know um, places you know to emphasize certain places you know get into the eyes and lead lead the lead the viewer to you know those contrasty areas One of the things I liked about um, this concept was just her the way she's gazing at the camera, and so um, I really wanted to focus, you know, 
the big focus to be her eyes so you can see I spend quite a bit of time here on that you know modeling this part up you know so for me um, I like using a the, the flat marker brush because it just feels like a chisel tip um, you know Copic marker you know and I, I leverage a lot of the um, the pressure sensitivity that my my Cintiq has you know so that I can you know you know follow along the form as you can see I'm drawing you know uh, and following the form with that to give you know that motion you know to the skin so that it looks like the skin is flowing in directions so the you know that's one of the reasons why I like using the um, the flat marker is for that you know just for that reason that it, it you know you can you can feel those strokes and 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 again it it feels like it's going you know even while I'm drawing on it I feel like I'm um, you know going over the surface of something kind of like I said like modeling so I'm still just building up tones you know and at, at one point I know I get to a, a spot where um, I realize I'm not as dark as where I, I should be with the image because again you know um, a lot of her was supposed to be in shadow so um, you know I'll, I'll, I'll hit that with a, a um, layer correction with the uh, brightness and contrast Yeah, when I when I decided when I found out that I was like, oh, it's gonna make a recording, uh, you know, I noticed that recording when I do record, I, I always my my mindset changes, and so with this one, um, I just wanted to set record and just and start um, start painting away. Um, I know when I get to the point where I'm trying to explain something as I do it, it, you know, I'm just, I'm just not really good at the, uh, you know, pat my head, rub my belly kind of situation. So again, you know, the areas that I felt like I, you can see, I add a lot more, um, you know, that, that dark in the mouth and the nose and I continue to add a, along the eyes. So, so yeah you know again it was I, I wanted to handle this more like a personal project because I know when I did the other cover I was um, one I was super excited about doing it so um, but to the point where it was probably a bad thing because <laughs> I was just all over the place and didn't have a game plan um, as, as much as I had on this one um, and also, you know, like I said, with with recording something, you know, I was trying to keep in mind, like, like I was describing it as I was going, and I, and I, I, I would start um, confusing myself. So, like with this one, I just wanted to push record, and just start um, working it out. And again, I probably should have checked what my settings were, but you know, uh, it's easier to say knowing I, I, I did it, you know, but. Um, this was a really fun um, test for me. It was quite the challenge because you know uh, switching from uh, I've, I've switched from Clip Studio from Photoshop to Clip Studio uh, almost two years ago. So we were we we're basically at the two year mark. When I did the last cover, I was um, I used Photoshop, and this one, you know, at that point. I, I wanted to find something different, something that I could use because I was getting more into illustration at that time. And so, uh, you know, when looking around, um, uh, I, I was kind of like, uh, let me look at some of the free ones out there like Krita. And um, I came across a, you know, a sale for Clip Studio. And I was really impressed with, you know, the brush engines, but, you know, over time, you know, I realized there was a lot of really good um, like, uh, like um, resources there, and so you know, it, it felt like a really good investment. So there, you just saw that I 
I finally realized that it wasn't um, it wasn't as dark as I'd wanted it to be. So, you know, I'd uh, you know punched up the, uh, the you know or dropped down the darkness and um, you know worked a little bit on the contrast. You know, so here I am. Once that was done, continuing to model, you know, to try to get that um, you know that form and that depth into it. You know, and again, my main focus is, is the eyes. Uh, you know, I wanted her eyes to really stand out. I really like working with um, darker skin tones, you know, because um, there's lots of fun variations you can do in there. Um, but in the same sense, it's, 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 you know, even though I have darker skin tones, it's, it's still... Um, you know, you know, the way the mind thinks on it, you know, um, again, I'm, I'm fairly new to, um, you know, as, as long as I've been drawing, you know, to, you know, start, um, making illustration my profession, um, it, it, I'm still, you know, working out, you know, colors and, and values and, and form, you know, um, so getting opportunities like this where it's, um, you know, trial by fire, where it's, you know, let's see where I can go. So this was a great challenge for me, again, to see um, how my workflow has evolved since I've been in, you know, since I've left Photoshop and gone completely with Clip Studio in the last two years. And I haven't looked back. I've been actually really happy with... Um, everything that clip studio offers you know um it it took me a second just for the fact is is I, I spent you know uh over 20 years in adobe products so you know switching to clip studio um at first you know i i was overthinking it and then i just you know what i realized was is just you know focus on the things that i you know i needed to do and then grow up from there. So, you know, I'd already kind of had a workflow with Photoshop. So I, you know, and there are a lot of things that um, Clip Studio has that, you know, which is nice because, you know, it follows that Clip Studio um, or that, you know, there's a lot of things that, you know, follow um, Photoshop, you know, so it wasn't super terrible to make that transition, you know the drawing part of clip studio was easier for me to wrap my head around but the painting part was was probably the part that i had um you know the harder time you know trying to come up with how i want to paint something because i was so um you know so enamored with the the photoshop brushes that i was using but you know what i found was is a lot of the the default clip studio brushes you know i'll still i'll go to their community hub and i'll i'll see if they have new brushes but majority of the brushes that i i use are a lot of their uh default brushes you know like i said the flat the flat marker brushes you know my go-to and then um and then um you know the lasso fill tool was another one that um again i you know as as I work on things, I, I love a flat brush, you know, because of like um, traditionally painting. Like when I paint, I like that flat brush because I can get, you know, block it out in big, um, big sweeping blocks, or I can you know turn it on its side and get a lot of detail. So um, you know that's how I came to you know like the feeling of the of the flat marker. And then um, with the lasso fill tool, um, I know when I was in Photoshop, I enjoyed the lasso and then having to fill it, you know, and I set a lot of hotkeys for it. But it was just nice that Clip Studio had it to where um, I could just lasso, lasso a shape and it was already filled. And so um, that one, I started um, practicing with a whole lot more just to um, work on my blocking. And so, um, you know, things that I enjoy about Clip Studio Paint um, as it's it's been um, you know like I said the last two years that I've been using I, I keep learning more and more and I feel like uh, you know it's, it's worth the investment you know and so 
Uh, here you can see I'm adding a little bit more of the details into the eyes. Again, having that, you know, um, you know that contrast between details and and um, space, you know, is something that, you know, that little bring the eyes to something. So, and again, I'm still working out the forms, and uh, you know, trying to get her you know to feel and feel those shapes and so most of the times when i'm creating like this it's it's basically what i'm basing on like how does it feel does it feel all right to me um and um you know i always early on <laughs> with pictures i there's that moment where it's just like what am i doing i need to give this up you know have i have i overworked am i overworking it you know, um, I was, I was there with this picture plenty of times. I know at this point, I'm still like, how am I going to handle the colors? I still haven't worked out, um, what it is that I want to do with the colors. You know, there's part of me that was like, you know, um, I knew I wanted to go cool, you know, but I didn't really have a solid, you know, game plan as to where I wanted to go with it. So, I just kept tinkering away until, uh, you know, until I was like, okay, get to a point to where, you know, he, oh, here's, here's the, uh, here's the tones that I like. I, th I feel like the tones are at a good place. That That's, you know, when I started, uh, you know, going into those, um, going into the, you know, what kind of colors I wanted to go with. So, and again, you can see that I, I left the, um, you know how they had the layout text and, and to drop it on because part of me was like you know <laughs> can I do this and those moments where I, I, I put the text up there and I you know imagine the cover you know one it, it, it would you know it would that little kid inside of me was like oh man you know you get to do the cover so you know popping up that cover on occasion one you know helped me to um reestablish you know not let the 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 negative talk in my mind you know go to something go back to that you know like the kid oh you know um you know this is something that you really want to do this is important so you know so you can see i, I pop that on there every once in a while then i've also flipped it um flipped it so that i can you know better gauge how my forms are looking and my is it still creating the feel that I, I want it to trying to be more uh, purposeful you know still shaping her head you know and again especially like in tones that's what I I enjoy that those moments where I can just let me just sit here with the tones and um, um, you know just tinker away so um, really really pretty much the whole workflow Still trying to work out how I wanted to, you know, put these lines on there. I'd been doing them for, you know, there was one post, you know, um, a few posts that I did on my Instagram where I did these lines. And <laughs> to tell you the truth, um, I just like the glowing lines. So, you know, the first few times I did them, um, I was like, oh, you know, I just need something. Let me throw these lines on here. So, you know, I enjoy them, but, you know, and then I've, I've been trying to be kind of, um, cause I did a few of them, uh, back to back that I wanted the, you know, the lines to be familiar throughout all those. So I kind of had this little split line at, at the bottom of one, uh, at the bottom, you know, that lead into the back of her head and you know split in two as it leads into her chin so you know I figured well I'll just add that same kind of you know pattern so that it's, you know you know I can keep consistent with them so it was neat to actually be able to give the you know do that with this one because you know again it kept me in um, you know kept my anxiety down keeping it in a realm where it's all oh, this is just, you know a personal piece you know just do your best 
you know, instead of getting to the place where it's, you know, what are people going to like? What are, you know, it's, I, you know, I, you know, <laughs> I struggle through a lot of, of, um, of pieces and so, you know, especially like when it comes down to ones where I'm doing them for other people, you know, I know a lot of the times they, you know, want me to do what I do, you know, but a lot of those times it's, you know, majority of my learning has been um, <laughs> me just going off and trying to figure out what it is, you know, that I like on something. So, you know, uh, when I get into doing work for other people, you know, that's where I try to keep my mindset is, is, you know, um, you know, I want to have fun. I want that to come through as I'm working on a piece. So that was, you know, to be able to get this, this, uh, you know, this cover again, created a, you know, you know, a little bit of stress, but in the same time, I, you know, I try to leverage the excitement of being able to do it. And I, you know, even as I'm working, I, at this point, I knew it was like, as I'm lighting things up, I'm, I'm lightening certain areas. I'm like, I, I know it's not as dark as it should be, you know, but again, that, it's just, just keep noodling, keep noodling. Uh, and once I get into the colors, that's when I start, you know, leveraging the, um, I start leveraging the, the ability to use, um, correction layers. Because majority of the times, if I were to start this out on color, I probably would have just, you know, painted on one layer. And, and majority of the times, that's how I like to paint. It's it's that, you know, if I don't like something, I'm just paint over it. But, you know, when working with clients, you know, there is that, you know, nerve-wracking, what if they don't like this? What if I have to change this? And so, um, you know, like I said, I'll, you know, try to keep as many layers as I can um, intact so that if there are changes that it's not anything crazy so here's where I start you know fleshing out the colors I, I'm gonna go ahead and drop the um, you know my mind and my thinking on it um, I've already recorded those and I'm gonna drop those at the, the back end of this video so that you can see um, how I went, went about and um, started experimenting with the colors now you know like i said i, I here i started uh making a just just for her face so that you know i'll reuse that that kind of mask to um to do adjustments you know so here as you can see I, once i got the i want cooler in the shadows um and warmer in the highlights you can see i'm adding red and in, into the into the highlights and I'm, you know, adding, you know, cyan and magenta to cool the uh, the shadows down, and um, you know, a little bit of warmth into the midtones. So again, um, this is when I start making the game plan: is to, you know, uh, warms and cool. I want the light to be warmer. I want the the darks to be cooler. And you know, I always try to think when I'm creating a portrait. Um, I don't want it even. I don't want an even amount of cool with an even amount of warm. I usually will go to a place where it's like, okay, three, three quarter of a, three quarters of it will be cool, and you know, uh, or, or you know, uh, you know, two thirds of it will be cool, and one third I'll make warm, or vice versa. It's just I, I handle it that way, so it's not so even throughout an image. Um, same thing with texture. Uh, it's I'll say you know um, I want you know uh, you know two thirds of you know it to be you know textured and I want um, a third of it to be smooth I'll do the same thing with like like I said lights and darks you know so two thirds of this image is darker and you know that one third is light just so that you know it helps me to get a game plan as I'm creating my um, am I over one area of the other? It helps to simplify, and, and so when I get further along in a piece, I can say, okay, where am I at? One, two, three. Okay, you know, do my checks. Okay, one, two, three. Do my checks. Um, I didn't do this before, 
and I noticed I'd get lost or I'd get frustrated really fast or I'd give up on an image. And um, so like here, as you can see, I'm taking from another, um, I'm taking from another the, the cooler parts. And it's also like, especially like the saturation, right? Start playing with that, um, you know, um, how saturated in the shadows, um, how much um, saturation, where am I gonna put those pops of saturation? you know, and, and putting them in places, you know, that mean something, not just willy nilly. So this is where I, there's a lot of experimenting. I collapse it, paint over it. And once I get to that part where it's here, look, there's the warm and cool. I, I take this image and I start to paint over the top of it to get, you know, all the details that I want. You know, you can see I add a little bit, you know, this is where I start adding some saturation. Where can I add some red, some warm it up, especially like in the light areas, you know, around by that shadow where the shadow turns, you know, start adding some saturation in there, you know, before it goes into the shadow, just to, you know, get that, that pop, you know, that it'll read, you know, warm, warm up the nose. You know, add, add little small colors, and again, it's just this is these are the kind of things that I keep in mind as I'm, I'm building up. Now, once now that I've got the colors, that's kind of how I I start thinking of things. You know, you know, where can I darken it back up? You know, and um, make sure the things that I want to read read. Once I got into the colors, it's you know before that it's like the idea of colors um while i'm in grayscale mode uh the idea of the colors is building the stress but once i get into the colors and i just start laying it down it's you know it's again just like you know sculpting i i, I already have my my colors kind of laid out for me so then it's just you know what kind of things can i add or take away or you know build upon that you know and, and once I see what the colors are doing, you know, um, um, you know, light to dark, then it's picking colors within that tone. So at this point in the piece, um, I got enough of the um, value information that I was looking for. Um, and I wanted to go ahead and uh, start with um, the first thing that I would, I would use is the uh, gradient map. Now, um, the gradient map I use for this one, the first one, uh, let me just go ahead and open that up. I initially, before I even start these, um, I'm fairly new to the gradient map. And so uh, they have a lot of uh, different um, areas that you can pull from. I created my own library, a kind of a starting point. So if I were to ever use this, again, I, I, I wanted to experiment with the idea. So um, I went through and just created a bunch of them early on just so that I can have them. And, you know, in that way, it just helps me to, you know, get a base of what I'm trying to accomplish. And with this one, you know, I kind of went with this, you know, icier blue. I knew I wanted to go with a, a cool skin tone in the shadows. But then wherever light hit, I wanted it to be uh, warm. So, you know, I started off with doing a gradient map, you know, to get me, you know, visually kind of get my mind started on picking colors. And how you go about doing that is it's, up here, new correction layer, gradient map. Now, you can also go in by way of tonal correction, gradient map, but um, especially like in the experimental stage, I like to use it, you know, use a new correction layer so that um, I can always go back and tweak it. Um, or if somebody needs changes, it's just easier to do it that way. And then on top of that, um, after I, I kind of did that, I went with a uh, color balance layer, you know, to try to, 
um, you know, with the color balance layer, you know, in, in my half tone or that mid range, I wanted to add a little bit of more red, you know, and a little bit of cyan into the shadows to cool it down. And in the highlights, add a little bit more uh, red and magenta to warm up. So again, I've, I've picked a starting point, um, kind of to, uh, you know, keep this smaller um, little rule that I've given myself um, always something to just fall back on. So like I said, I was, you know, as I started coming up with um, trying to decide what colors I would do, you know, I used the gradient map first and then started going okay um, warm to cool warm to cool and in that sense I'm able to continually you know the further I get into it you know am I still on that on that track again it's a lot of back and forth experimenting um, earlier on um, you know, like I said, I'd, I'd, once I had that, I'd flatten the image. So this is what I did. I went, so by having these, I control select all of them, go in, merge visible layer to new layer X so that I can have it. It's all grouped all in one. And it's also something that I can experiment with. So I usually set that aside. I'll close these back up and now I have this one flat image that I can go in and, and tweak, right? It still gives me my, um, my, uh, you know, the alpha around it. And if I were to ever like do painting, I could lock the transparency, you know, and then do my, and do, do, uh, painting on top of it right so i can add uh you know my little hints of okay i want to warm it up over here you know over by the cheek take it a little bit warmer you know and i can i can i can do my experiments and it's not you know bleeding over by having this and i, I can you know get a couple of things really quick so You know, and I usually keep a folder of all the other stuff, you know, so that if I ever need to go back to it, you know, I have it there. It's just all, all safety nets, right? So in another folder, you know, I, I put all my exp experimentations, I collapse those things, you know, and I, and I took experimentation, um, you know, tweaking the, the warmth of the skin tones, you know, and uh, adding, you know, more color layers and, you know, where I can get little pops. But right at this area is where I made the decision to go ahead, you know, and make this a little bit more pronounced to have the um, cool and warm separation. You know, so once I got that, um, these other two layers were were set to tone those things down so that I could have, um, you know, cause I didn't want it that strong, but I wanted to get to a, a spot that I could start painting on top of. So once I got to this point, I collapsed them. I collapsed them like I did. And then I had another layer that I could actually paint on top of, which was this. And so from here that gave me my base to, you know, start my painting. And so once I have this part, you know, I'll grab another layer and and start painting over the top. I wanted to, you know, like with this, I, I, I put a little bit of bounce light from her collar up into her chin and, you know, started smoothing everything out on a separate layer. Now, um, you know, keeping everything like this, adding the little colors and pinches and pops um, that's all 
again, experimental. I just sit and I go, you know, I, I go based off of feeling. And, um, you know, so I have a couple of other extra layers, you know, to, um, you know, just, just for the lips, you know, to just to experiment and tweak. So it's, you know, I can come in here uh, with the hue and change the lip color without, um, you know, uh, having to paint it over and over again, um, you know, and brightness and contrast, you know, it's, it's, you know, I can still take these things down. Oh, if it didn't work out, I can experiment and still, uh, you know, get a feel without destroying my, my one painting layer, you know, so I can always have something to go back to. Now, I normally don't work, you know, like this, you know, this is something that I'm, um, you know, trying to, uh, clarify for myself. Cause usually I'll just stay on one layer and paint everything up. But I do like this, especially like working, um, with clients being able to sit and say, if, you know, like I said, if they wanted to change the lip colors, I, I can always go back to this and then, um, you know, and I keep adding from there, you know, start, uh, putting other textures, you know, playing with them on separate layers so that I don't, um, you know, if it's something that I, I, I dislike, I can just take it off, you know, here I'm using a color burn layer to kind of strengthen that form along her face to give it that, um, that depth, you know, and some more painting over. So like I said, once I get, you know, certain places, I keep adding, um, you know, I'll get to a good spot before I start, you know, flattening everything out. You know, I, I, I experiment with adding, um, certain details. So here I've added the rim light. And then again, especially by such a strong light source, I add, um, more saturation along that line to give it that um, more depth, you know, to give it that, that form and, and feel like the light is coming across. And here I use another brightness contrast. And um, one of the things is, is I can go to reuse a mask. You know, I can control click the mask from a previous one and say if I want to do a new one and create a mask you know now I have something that I can create the mask and uh, you know if, if it's oh I want to add a little bit of um, purple right and I can I can I can still use the mask you know and then set that you know I just add some color right and so it's not destructive. I have the ability to um, um, experiment so by keeping that. So that's what I did. So when thinking about the uh, background, I didn't want it a whole lot, you know, so they would take away from the actual face. But I knew that the face, because it was, it was so much smoother, that I wanted to add, um, you know, texture to frame the face so one of the things I did was lighten up the area you know um, by her eyes you know and again um, if you look like um, you know if you watch this on the on the color wheel you know when I sample I'm more cooler and then as I get to the lighter spots you know this slider starts sliding towards warm so I'm still keeping with in that um, theme that you know the light is warmer um, than the dark the cool is the dark part uh, and the light is a little bit warmer so um, so then I utilize that and then start texturing so I use the um, this, this chalk, you know, to give me most of this big, um, these big shapes, oops, I'm on the wrong one, you know, 
for the for the to keep along these lines I want it to be that lighter uh, warmer blue you know move towards the green and then uh, and again I'm using the pressure sensitivity as well you know I'm not pushing really hard just to you know um, get those um, things and then um, once I had that complete I went to this um, splatter type brush to uh, you know break up that chalk chalk like pattern so that's how I came up with the uh, the background for this image one thing I like to do um, in, in, in some of my images is that um, like when I got to this point I was you know um, her skin seemed so smooth so what I wanted to do was add a little bit of noise to just her skin you know just so it doesn't look so even so what I did was is I'd control click the mask that I used previously and create a new layer and I go up to filter um, render pearl and noise and then I just drop this um, you know to a point where it's you know it'll give it a little bit of noise in the color you know and again this is one of those experimental kind of things and I'll go with that and then I will set this to uh, multiply and I will drop the opacity you know somewhere around you know really low but you know it gives it that splotchy kind of feel so there's a little bit of texture and tooth to it rather than it being super smooth lastly the uh, the one part that I always enjoy um, doing on, on some of my illustration are these glowing lines that I've it, it one of the reasons why I just I just for some odd reason I just love the way it pops especially off of um, you know darker skin tones so um, of course I've separated the uh, the lines um, on its own layer and kept them there since the beginning so how I go about um, you know making them glow is I will duplicate you know the line layer so now I've got a duplicate right above it um, I will go into filter blur Gaussian blur you know and I will bring that up to a reasonable blur and hit OK now I will lock its transparency and then with my lasso fill tool I will pick um, kind of a yellow orange color and because the because the uh, opacity is locked I can just select all of it and it makes it you know that color now I will drop it down to uh, uh, the layer to uh, add glow so there's that glow and it was a little bit strong on the white so what I did was is I'd um, did an add on that and then just dropped its opacity a little bit So that it wasn't so pronounced. So just make that the glowing edges, um, you know, kind of blend into the skin a little bit better. So that's pretty much it. Um, I can't thank you enough for checking out this workshop again. Uh, hopefully, it, it it was something that was useful for you uh, that you gleaned something from it. I had a complete blast creating this piece and uh, uh, super grateful for Imagine Effects and Clip Studio again giving me the opportunity to do this. Um, 
keep on keeping on.